Hello and welcome to Anglia Car Auctions here in Kings Lynn. This is a preview video for the classic car sale which is happening on May 1st and May 2nd 2021. So if you're watching it past that time, go online, check out the results from that sale, see what some of these uh, cars made, these vehicles that we're going to show you. Uh, but if you're watching it before May 1st and 2nd, 2021, then you are in time to get involved with the auction, to maybe even enter a car or potentially bid and win one of the many lots that we've got coming up. And uh, joined by Mr. Guy Snelling. Welcome. Good afternoon, Bryn. Nice to see you again. I, I actually welcomed you there to your own place of work. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> as ever, I'm incredibly excited. Uh, we, we go back and forth in between the auctions. Guy sends me pictures and teases me with some of these things. This is all very, very exciting. And the, the, the being blessed enough to come up here and be allowed in, still as we're operating under COVID restrictions, is not lost on me. So um, we appreciate it's very hard for some of you to sit at home and not be able to get involved. But hopefully this will give you a little taster of some of the vehicles that are coming through. And Guy, at the moment, what are we looking at lot-wise for the upcoming sale? Uh, we've got over 100... Uh, confirmed entries so far and we're looking at probably 180 200 in total yep. um, so uh, yeah really really positive result um, on the last sale yeah, it was, some it was huge, really great it? entries coming in this yeah. one so, so do you think people maybe looked at the results from the last sale just a little bit of market analysis I think there's, there's always there's always an element of that but you know we're seeing things uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel with, yeah. with restrictions uh, the sun was shining three days ago. Yep. It's not today. It's not. You know? it's so I just politics. think, you know, people are looking forward to the, to the summer, getting things out. Maybe they've been in the garage a while over winter. So they're now making a bit of a plan. And there's a few big automotive events scheduled for the summer of 2021. So that gives people maybe a bit of something to aim for, a bit of a destination. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, I mean, uh, Goodwood Members Meeting's been pulled back, but not cancelled, which is great. Yep. You know, revival. You've got the car fest type events. Car fest events, um, you know, some of the jumbles. And I think I was talking to some of the uh, local club members uh, recently, and there's quite a lot of um, events that have been postponed last year that they're now going full speed ahead with. Fingers crossed. So I think yeah. there'll be some really good events. People can get the cars out again uh, and catch up with a lot of lost friends that they haven't seen yeah, for a year. You know, exactly, it's been this missing circle year. circle that yeah. you only have through cars. And... What a selection we've got already. I know it sounds incredibly cliched, but genuinely, you blow me away each time with the stuff that I turn up and you go, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this. But in reality, a lot of these cars are very new into the premises. For, the, for anybody that's not seen anything about Anglia car auctions before, um, it's a two to three acre site here in Kings Lynn. It is the only location. It's not a huge multinational chain. Um, been established for decades does a lot of general car auctions, but then has these fantastic classic car yeah, auctions. Yeah, five a year we're, five we're a year. running on, yep. the, uh, on the classic calendar. Yep. Um, and because the site's owned, we can be far more flexible. So a lot of these cars have been with us several weeks. Yep. You know, the sale's not for another month. We had, as we know, some arrivals this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got um, some fresh arrivals to show you shortly. And, um, so it's great. And it gives you an opportunity to market the vehicles as well. If you're looking at selling a classic vehicle, at the moment, it's very hard. You're limited to the websites. You're limited to... Well, actually, you're not limited. That's the wrong word. There's so many different ways of selling a car these days that often you can almost be spread too wide. But if you... The, the classic car, car auction, I think... We're going to need to make a video, actually, about why you should sell your car. It, it's like a focus. It, yeah. it, it's, it's something that we've built up for many, many years. Um, We've got a huge client base from yeah. all over the world. Just the people you run me through that have been in touch with you or that you know that are aware of this place. I mean, it just, yeah. it's reflected in the sales that you get and the vehicles you get in as well, which I know you're very interested in. So let's get to some of the high points of this sale. Um, yeah. The Rolls Royce. Now, you get a lot of Rolls Royces and Bentleys come through. And what I've seen over the last three sales I've done with you, there's always a couple of high points within them. So I think this is one of them, isn't it? This... Uh, it's a 1982 Rolls Royce Silver Spirit, but what sets that's quite early for a Silver Spirit. It is. Isn't it? It's carburetor car. Right. Um, what sets it apart from many many examples is it's only done 14,668 miles. 68 miles uh, from new. And there's something in there which I think you've picked up on. I, I have got very <laughs> very excited about this. I think Noddy's just going to squeeze through with the camera, guy. If you can open up the, the door for him there. 
So firstly, at 14,668 miles, you can see the, the condition of the interior is incredible. But cup holders, oh, no, 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 no. We have a, I don't know if it's silver or it's plated, you need to do your own research on that, a thermos in the centre console. We also have the cut glass. Yes. And the, there's the bottles in there as well. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just yeah. very safely put that down there. <laughs> and down in here, we have two cut glass bottles. Now, I'd like to say you'd have your cordial or your water in it, um, because clearly this is the driver's seat and this is the cup holder for the driver's seat. Um, but I think somebody maybe had something a little bit stronger in there. So, um, yeah, just a wonderful, wonderful time warp car. It's uh, yeah, 40, yeah. nearly 40 years old. That would have been an extra, you know, quite yeah. an expensive extra when you, when you, when you ordered say? your new car. Yeah, when you could specify it, you could maybe have yeah. it in the back. Yep. If somebody's gone into a dealer and said, no, no, I'll drive myself and I want a cut glass decanter <laughs> in the centre console. Absolutely brilliant. And yeah, like you say, 14... Just under 15,000 miles. Um, what sort of guide price? Because these, as we know, these are anything from 3,000 to... 40,000. 40,000. So it's yeah. an incredibly wide market, isn't it, as yeah. to where these end up. So a real interesting piece there. Um, this. Now, if you, you said this earlier on. If you want to go to Goodwood with the family, you want to rock up in something that no Some one Some of the events got. happening this year. Yeah. What a family wagon. Dog in the back, picnic hamper. Yeah. Um... It's just lovely. So Super rare. For those that don't know what it is, it's uh, Morris Oxford. I thought it was 50s, but you said 63, 64? This one's actually uh, 62, 62. Think, yeah. So it's quite late no, it's for a car with I'm actually this look. styling. Um, yeah, Guy's got his crib sheet. 55. Right there. No, oh, it's a sorry. 55. 55, this one. I did think maybe it's 50s, yeah. but... So as, um, as a bit of a left-field choice over a Morris Minor Travel or something like that, it's a very traditional looking car. It's got some gorgeous, simple lines to it, but it's just that bit bigger. So road presence, when you're out there and amongst modern traffic, I think it would just feel a little bit more comfortable to be in something like this. Yeah. Um, really, really lovely thing. Again, still got the semaphores. Still got the semaphores there, the little pop out indicators. Um, and a lot of the details on these vehicles are online um, yeah. and it currently being updated as well. So if you're watching this fresh, you know, some of these cars have literally just rolled into the hall. Yeah. The website's being updated every day. Yeah. So do yeah. keep checking back if it's pending details. It will be updated. And there's new cars going on every day as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, and that's really important. Um, subscribe to the channel. All the preview videos for these vehicles are put up onto the YouTube channel. Um, hit the little alarm bell thing because that will then tell you when a new video comes out so you don't miss anything. We often find when we get to sale day, people will be on the live feed and they'll be commenting, saying, oh, Where's the details on that? It's like there is as much as you're going to get out of any auction house, you're going to find it through Anglia Car Auctions. So um, just moving on, this, I mistook yeah. earlier on for an Armstrong Sidley. Um, so I'll apologise to any Armstrong Sidley owners that might be watching this, but what is it, Guy? It's a S1 Bentley, um, Hooper bodied, and how stylish. It's just... I, I, it's I just, did that middle-aged man God. thing where you sort of go, oh, but it yeah. genuinely is. It's got this wonderful wood-topped dash which curves round, runs down into the door tops, and then sort of kicks up and goes up round the rear window. It's got some beautiful lines to it. It's got the, the rear suicide doors, as they call them, so that one can graciously enter the back of your Bentley. It's, um, it, and that door clunk is... It's like you're shutting the door to Fort Knox or the, the Star yeah. Chamber. It's a really, really lovely, lovely thing. And again... The, the colour, colour combination really suits it, doesn't yeah. it? The Hooper lines. It's just... Yeah. It's I'm not just, quite sure how many they made or anything like that, but Hooper, yeah. that traditional British... Coach I mean, builder. Coach yeah. builder, yeah. Really, really lovely. Um, now, these auctions, and what we try and do with these preview videos is cover a wide range of vehicles. The, yeah, we can't, mention, we can't mention everything, yeah. but just a little selection that we, we managed to pull out for you this morning. Yeah, but you do have such a wide variety, and if you've got kind of luxury and cruising and big, just lovely places to be, or maybe a bit of an older family wagon, here you've got potential. This is all about potential. So this Mercedes-Benz convertible, we've seen prices in the marketplace rocket on these over the last sort of 15, 20 years, and rightly so. They're, yeah. they're exquisitely built cars. Um, tell me more about this one. It's been off the road for quite a number of years, running and driving, 
Will so it, want it runs and drives yep, now. Runs and drives. Um, we we drove it here. Well, just into position this morning. Yep. Um, does need some work, but it's just super cool. I yeah. mean, there is an argument for restoring it, but there is also an argument. As I said, you've got a holiday home on one of the Greek islands. This is the car. Oh yeah. That you want to have the roof permanently down. Trundling around. I, it's I, just. I saw an brilliant. elderly couple on the Millimilia six, seven years ago, who they were, they were the right side of stylishly weather beaten. They clearly travelled extensively. Never heard that before, I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just carried it, right. they carried their age very well. You could see them in this, just being blissfully unaware of the world around them, having a lovely time. It's, it's got a sticker on on the windscreen there, National Trust 2007. So it's not been off the road a huge Great, time. great plate on the front as well. Yeah, oh yeah, the number plate is, it goes with the vehicle. Does go with the car, yeah. yeah. So really, really lovely plate on this. MEP 67, um, and yeah, the interior, it's, it's yeah, it's weather-worn. It's, it's weather-worn, but it's still a nice place to be. And I love it's got sheepskin seat rugs, so you can, I don't know, keep yourself warm on a, on a cold day, but, I mean, restoration on one of these is going to be deep, deep into five, potentially even six figures. But so, I don't think you need to go too far, you know, you, you can no. do as much or as little well, you as and you I want to do. Would not even polish it. Just straight out. Just drive it home. Exactly. MOT and tax exempt, you know. Yeah. Insure and go. Um, but yeah, whatever you want to do to it, there's a bit of potential there. Now, this Austin A60 van, I said this to you earlier on, I was given my first car. It was a Citroen 2CV. The very first car I tried to buy was an Austin A60 van. Um, you didn't try I, hard enough. I failed hopelessly because <laughs> I didn't tell anyone I was trying to do it. I was 17. I had a 2CV that couldn't tow anything. And obviously, because I'm an idiot... It was a bag of dogs do. But this You wanted thing, a half ton half ton oh, van, yeah. This is just when vans they were still car derived. Yeah. So it's got this lovely big set of flowing lines. Well if you it's look, you know, it's it's the same family as the Austin as the as, as the, Oxford the, uh, estate, the, the Morris Morris estate. Oxford estate. It's it's the same DNA. Yeah. Um, just fifteen fifteen years later. Yeah, so this is early seventies. Um, these ran through till this is one of the later ones. One of the I later think. ones, yeah. But 20 years ago, these were a rare sight. So, so to find one now with, with you know, metal arches, arches, metal arches all the way through it, it's. Lovely. I mean, and, and this is all just our personal opinion. Do your research, get online, and maybe get a dealer. We'll talk in a little while about what people need to do to be able yeah, to inspect arches. vehicles. But it's just a gorgeous thing. And what's the, what's the guide price on this guy? We've put a very attractive guide on this of six to eight thousand. Six. To, I think it's so, going to go north of ten personally. You know, that's what again, if you're watching this in the future, you can go online, um, provided it's within about a year of the sale, and you'll be able to see the results from the sale. So, um, it's one that I think I love to take. I can home. just see that being sign written as well. Yeah. Really. Well, yeah. I Advertising. Did, I, see, in me, banded steels. I shot one for pra Practical Classics magazine about nine or ten years ago that the guy had had for years and years and years, and that had a Rover V8 in it. I think it had MGB back axle, because you've got the B-series engine yeah. in them, so you can fit a bit of a, bit of a tweaked B-series in it. Just a great place to be. Yeah, um, I, I, just, like yeah I, I really sort of miss that organic shape now. The vans are vans. They're not based on cars, proper vans like this. I, I'm getting all romantic about a van I've never owned. And you're just about to get even more excited. Yes. <laughs> it's a Land Rover County. Um, Guy knows I love Land Rovers. I own Land Rovers. I've got a Land Rover parked outside Land Rover products. I do some work for Land Rover. Um, this thing, we've seen values of Land Rovers. In the last sale, there were some really great results, wasn't there? Fantastic. Um, and it's all generations, from yeah. Series 1 to the, I think we've got, uh, we've got a couple of later Defenders in this. We've got a North. Yep. No, no, we've got a 50th anniversary 50th in this 50th UK, well. UK supplied, 50th, which, yep. you know, brilliant, V8. Automatic. If you're not quite into the more traditional Land Rover driving experience, <laughs> yeah, that's a polite have a V8 automatic with power steering. You know, yeah. they drive incredibly well. But yeah. this, I mean, I've moved this around, driven it just uh, shortly around the uh, around the estate. It's tight. It's it's yeah. it's lovely. It's got the lovely sort of because it's one of the last model um, series Land Rovers. It's got the crossover, so it's got Defender style seats in it all the early Defender seats in it, which they also used in these. It's just got that very simple older dash. It's got this wonderful sort of sun visor on it. It's quite colonial with the old school AA stickers on it. 
Um, yeah, really, really, really nice thing. And again, overdrive um, yeah. as well. <clears throat> overdrive. Yeah. Ooh. I haven't looked underneath it, and this is not something that I can really comment on. The con you know, you have to draw your own conclusions or do your own research as to the condition of the vehicles. But these, the values on these, they are climbing because they're not making any more of them. And I just stress that it's just it's got the look of, of a very original Survivor, yeah. and that's. Yeah, you know, the there's a, a real charm with that. The little wing nuts on the grill there that I think Noddy showed you a little while ago. Sort of the dog guard in the back. Um, yeah, really lovely thing. And if you wanted a series Land Rover, this is about as late as it gets. Yeah. So, uh, Noddy, come on back through here and let's show you a few more cars. Um, what have we got now? What about onto this little baby Isetta? In the last, last sale... Last sale, yes. We had a, a bit of fun with a uh, three... Three um, little Heinkels. Yep, little. Um, and, and so the Heinkel in the Assetta. All of a, all of a similar era. Um, yep. Very, very similar car. This is very unusual in that it's a Brighton built car. Ah, so, so it's assembled UK, in Brighton. Right. I um, never knew they, were, they even made them in the UK. Yeah, which makes it, makes it really rather unusual. It's a bubble, that, bubble window. One finger there lifting this open. It's a and really, really good Look at the thing. quality of that. Restoration work. It's it's lovely. Really incredible. Um, and it, so I know very very little about bubble cars, bubble car values. I don't even. I wasn't even in the room when the Heinkel sold because we were doing the um, the non runners outside. What sort of money did they go for? Well, as you know, they were utter toast. Yeah, yeah. but not to, they're everything salvageable. Everything's got potential. Everything's got potential, but they did they did need a lot of work. Yeah, um, and they were making um, sort of. Two and three thousand pounds uh, a pop. Really, um, I didn't realise that. That's this has had a fortune spent on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, this is coupled with the rarity. Yeah. Um, it's it's stunning. I don't think you'll find one what, quite like that. What's the guide on it then? Thirty-five to forty-five. Wow! 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 So wow. Um, yeah, yeah. What a be and it's a beautiful, brilliant. beautiful little thing. Colour um, hasn't got the sliding windows. It's bubble window. It's just yeah. It's just spot on. I drive a little 2003 Smart Brabus. This is kind of like the 1950s version of that, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, and so Noddy's just over there at the moment. We've got this wonderful old, is it T TD? TD. T TF? Yeah. No. TD. TD. So lovely TD. Um, right hand drive. Got this beautifully aged sort of cotton that Lovely canvas. canvas. That's yeah. really, really lovely. It's, it's like With a sail bag, screens. isn't it? It's just yeah, lovely. I just, I'm a lot of time for that. Um, really, really nice, solid thing, but I want to talk about this yes. BMW here. I'm jumping around all over the place because, like we say, there is so much to do. And we're also consciously aware of the fact you have lives to live instead of listening to two blokes walking around a garage sort of looking but at cars. Arrived this morning. Yeah. Um, it's been in long-term ownership, 22 years. Uh, it's a rather, rather special car, yep. as so you know. Johnny Chicotto uh, limited edition BMW M3, it's the Evo, it's, I think. It's a limited edition. They made 505 yep. of these. Um, lots of little features made them stand out from a, a normal E30. Yep. Thinner glass. Thinner glass. For lightweight. Um, Left-hand drive only. So left a lot of people might only. look at this and go, oh, it's left-hand drive. The, the E30 M3s only came in left-hand drive. This one, it's uh, number 240. 240 out of 505. 505. So um, slap bang in the middle of production. Um, and I think this is a good car to talk about the value of these 1980s, these 1990s um, fast sort of roads classics. Uh, we've seen incredible results for Saab 99 turbos, Renault 5 turbos, the Fiesta Super Sport in the last sale at 17, 18,000 pounds. Um, this, I know you've put a guide of about 40 to 45. 45 to 55 on this. Yeah. Um, a lot of interest, yeah. even just for a few people who I've mentioned it to. It's only just been on the website. It's and it a did car... literally. It rolled in. The gentleman drove, drove it, it off. Drove it here a couple of hours ago. Just literally um, pulled it up like he was in a Ford Fiesta. It was absolutely beautiful to see. I think indicated. Uh, it's 155,000 kilometres, so, so yeah. just under a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. 
You do the math. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you do the math. There you go. 100, 155,000, 156, I think it's on the clock. But it's, it's so rigged, you know, the dash isn't cracked. Yeah. Um, and he's an engineer, isn't he? He's an interesting guy himself. Yeah, really, really lovely guy. Um, don't know if you'd like me to mention his age, but he's, no. he's getting on a little bit. So he's a mature owner. He's yep. not someone that's just... Um, the way he hopped out dinner. of it earlier on, though. He oh, was, you wouldn't know. He's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it, you but know, he, he works in motorsport. Motorsport. We don't, we don't want to give too many personal details away. Yeah. But. Um, so very, very talented, clever guy who's looked after it yeah. just as it should have been looked and after. And I'm looking at the camber on the front wheels and, you know, he, he, he knows his stuff. And, and you pointed out earlier on as well, these, these M3s, very, very distinctive. You won't be able to see it from there, but they had to compete with the Mercedes Cosworths. They had to reduce the rake on the rear screen. screen so they've got this added bit where the rear window sits in and the, the raised boot lid. There's, there's so much to talk about just on this car and I, for one, am very interested to see what this does because right now, the market for these, I'd say this is on Hot. fire, you know. Yeah. It's just such an incredible car to Chicotto have. Chicotto edition E30 yeah. M3. Yeah, fantastic. For, with, with such great heritage behind and, it. And well. we've got another partner car for this, oh. which, which isn't here today. I'm learning this right now as well. I didn't know this. Um, we've got a... Super low owner, low mileage, BMW M635 Ooh. CSI manual ah, coming oh well. in the sale. Lovely. I just can't wait to see them together. Yeah. Both products of the 80s. Yeah. Both from Bavaria. They're just going to look and fantastic. next door as well. We're not going to show you it right now, but it's going to be in the sale. 840. Lovely so 840 the, on the staggered you know, BBS. Moving, moving forwards are... A decade or a decade yeah, and a bit. Eight forties. The values on those. It's one of those. Shot so up. I think. And when we talk about the values of these cars, Guy and I are both enthusiasts that somewhere along the line managed to make a little bit of a living out of cars in one way or another. And it comes from a fascination because we're both of a similar age. Where an eight forty has been one of those cars that's always been on my radar, and I've yeah. never owned one. And I need to either own one now or they're going to be beyond my reach. That's what tends to happen. Yeah, yeah. like these. Like I, I can remember looking at these in about 2001, 2002, out in Germany, 8,000 euros, yeah. drive it back, sell it for 10,000 pounds. And a friend brought a few back and did it. And I thought, oh, oh, you know. And I wasn't a car dealer. I was literally a motoring journalist. I thought, oh, that seems like a good idea. Never did it. And I now look at it and go, wish, wish I had. You know, this is... This is 50 plus, I'm sure of it. So, oh, yeah. 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 So, you know, I'm not going to be buying that. Um, if you can't afford a car, if you haven't got room in the garage, if you live in a 10th floor flat and you have a little bit of wall space, here uh -huh. is something for you. Yes. We Run always, us through this lot then, guys. We always have a, a little selection of automobilia items. Um, as you can see, it's quite varied. Um, from so it's a bit awkward guy i'm just just putting it out there <laughs> from a branding point of view this could go viral though well it was it was corona um drinks yes the soft drinks lemonade with the um used to have the money back on the uh, bottles yep. didn't you yeah yeah and the beer it's but a yeah, lovely sign though great. i'm a big fan beautiful of beautiful sign face. enamel but from enamel signs to um tin aluminium even some cardboard signs uh, which have survived up there. Yeah, and that, so from a collector point of view, you mentioned it there, the cardboard sign a actually surviving. That's because it, a you unique know, The fact that right? it survived makes it rarer often than a metal sign. I'm going to carefully pick my way up through because I was looking at this one earlier oh, on. Isn't that a beauty? The champion spark plug sign here. It's got the motorway network on it as it was at the time. So this here is continuous lengths of dual carriageway. So that's the A1 before it became the... Well, the A1M ends there. But then you've got all these sort of motorways that we now know and love that weren't really in existence. Notice so. no motorways in Norfolk then and no <laughs> motorways in Norfolk now. <laughs> <laughs> <So there's> no, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Norfolk, England's best kept secret. Absolutely. Um, and another one, whilst just, I'm up here, I just have to bring your attention to is that they've covered it up with this wonderful sort of crayon drawing there. Um, the Austin Ambassador, expensive motor cars in all but price. That's, uh, <laughs> the Ambassador was kind of the princess's swan song, I suppose. It, yeah, it was. Just a, a, a mate's dad bought one. I always one think of Ferrero right? Rocher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Austin Ambassador. I mean, if you're into Ambassadors, fair play, because I... I'm into all sorts of different things, and I admire anybody who has a dedication to a mark or a particular model. 
But uh, yeah, something there. But even these, anyone. these are original signs, Michelin signs, still in their packaging. Oh, wow. Um, probably from the 70s, early 80s. Just yeah. survived, never been out. So. Just been chucked in the back of a garage somewhere. Yep. Someone's not bothered putting it up. So yeah. um, down to the last couple of cars now. We will talk a little bit in another video about how you should uh, get involved with Anglia Car Auctions if you wanted to sell your classic car. Um, but a little bit of a trio now of British classics. Um, the Mini. The Mini. Well. So Mini values as well. Yeah, Mini values. I mean, they're such an iconic car, yeah. aren't they? Everybody loves a Mini. Yeah. If everybody drove a Mini, I think they'd appreciate the roads a little bit better just just yeah. just to have a go even if you don't stick with it just borrow a friend's mini yeah. and have a go because the they are of fun they are just fantastic um, and this one's this mark one's two really cooper nice. s um again we've sold this car before probably about four years ago it's come back for sale and which is um, a great indicator great. of the service and the price that people achieved for the car that you know that you you have a lot of repeat customers you have a lot of uh trade that you deal with it's just like a big family i've only yeah. been here like i said for three sales but Everyone that's here behind the masks is kind of, they know each other and get on. And mm. it's, no, it, yeah, good place to it's be. It's good. And this drives. Yeah. Lovely. It's got yeah. a little bit, of, little bit of pep, one would say. So it's, and again, the details will be up on the website. This is yeah, we'll be up, updating the details uh, it's a shortly. 1275. You, may, you maybe thought it was even It's, it's had, a, had a little bit, of, uh, little bit of work, but we'll, you know, read yeah. the, yeah, read yeah, the read website. Read the blurb, jump on the website. On the website is up in the background there angliacarauctions.co.uk there is a separate section for the classic cars where you're going to find a short description a bunch of pictures on each vehicle with a lot number and that lot will then indicate where it's going to be in the sale on either may the 1st or may the 2nd 2021 um now this thing yeah <laughs> obviously a miniature land rover i don't think it's a licensed product or anything like that it looks very much scratch scratch built lo lovely, lovely home built thing um, now, normally you'd have a little Briggs and Stratton in it, or maybe oh, most of the electric, more you know. modernly an, an electric but, one. Oh Ooh. no! Oh no! What's in this good guy? <laughs> we have a four-cylinder petrol engine. <laughs> so this is the sort of thing you would have found in a Reliant, Reliant Robin. Robin. Yeah, 750cc. Or, yeah. Um, but someone's had a lot of fun building yeah. that. I'm and, not saying it's it's ideal for young children <laughs> no because with a 750 cc engine in it and what a four-speed gearbox yeah four-speed box this would probably do and not that i think anybody would be mad enough to do it about 40 or 50 mile an hour and just if i delicately climb up into it this is your seating position your pedals are pretty much mashed together i mean you know if you've got it's a brilliant state that you want to get around really quickly Amazing, but I don't know about you, Guy. I, I, I'd probably 20 mile an hour flat out. 20 mile an hour would do me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, a real little novelty item there. We've got a few more in the sale as well. A couple of really interesting things hidden away, only for the purposes that we haven't got time to talk about them. And that's another good example of that. These, these extra 100 lots, the, up to you know, maybe 200 lots that are going to be going through. Huge variety and uh, very interesting stories behind all of them. Um, last car we're going to talk about today, I think. I rather, rather like this. See, I never really had you down for an MGB kind of man. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love an MGB. Well, mind you, <laughs> I can't think of a kind of car, a type of car that I would, I would actually have you down for not being into. I was just yeah. thinking, I was like, <laughs> I never had you down for being a Zestava kind of guy. Oh, I love a Zestava. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, tell us about this one then. MGB, GT, um, V8. Yep. Not a factory built V8, but I would argue perhaps a better option. Um, built over quite a, quite a few years, I think approaching two decades, it's been built and tweaked and fiddled with. Can we start? It out? drives. The keys are in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Because I think people need to hear this because the engine is either overboard or it's a four litre. Four litre. Yep. Yeah, you're out of gear. Right. Hear the fuel pump ticking away in the background there. So absolutely on the key. Yeah. Got that lovely, lovely burble to it. Because MGB's always felt a little bit, not underpowered, because you can do good things with a B-series engine. But Look at the bonnet. Yeah, with a V8 in it. 
and we have had it running so it is it is quite warm i'm yeah. not going to over rev it or anything it's hopefully that hopefully you can hear that through the microphones we're wearing here how can you not like that so that just Thumbing through the lanes of a, of a warm summer's evening is a happy place to be. Full length of a basto on it. forget. Again, another little yeah. traveller. There's, there, well, there's so many um, cars we've got in. What else that you know about that's coming in are you excited about? Very, very excited. We've got a 1962. You remember I sent you the picture? Yep. Can you remember? No. Aston Martin, Lagonda, oh, Rapide. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, yeah. The old... What, for, uh, basically, it's, it's, it's a four-door yep. Aston Martin DB4. Yeah. Gorgeous um, thing with that quad headlight front end on it. Absolutely stunning. Um, Aluminium bodied. It's gorgeous. I believe it's the only factory-built manual overdrive example, and it's right-hand drive. Is it's it so it's black. black. It's super it's rare. Yeah. It's just, it's lovely. Yeah. So, um, not here with us yet, um, but we're with us shortly. Um, and again, you can probably see through there. Yeah. But like, what defines a classic car? Yeah. It's always, always a, an interesting question, but I've, I'm really smitten by the little um, Clio. Yeah, so uh, you won't really see it in the background there. There's a Clio 172 Sport O2 plate. It's done 15,000 miles. 15,000. Well, don't say it like that, 15,000 miles. This Rolls Royce that we started out on is only 15,000 miles. <laughs> and I, I think, you know what, that's kind of a, a good place to wrap it up. Um, if you've been watching this before May the 1st and May the 2nd, 2021, then you're in time. Tune in to either Facebook or YouTube. We're going to be live on those dates for the Anglia Car Auctions, Classic Car Auction, the sort of the spring edition, 2021. Yeah. Um, if you're watching it past that, please look online at the results. See what these cars made. Is this a, a £10,000 car or is it a £15,000 car? The marketplace is all over the place at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting. Guy, um, anything else to add to the, that might be able to help people get involved or any information? No, well, thanks, thanks for coming, Bryn. Um, you know, we'll keep... To be fair, you couldn't keep me away, could you? I was no. outside, let yeah. me in. Let me in. Do please always check the website. It's constantly updating. Um, the sooner you enter a car, don't leave it to the last minute because yeah. we need time to do things like this. Yeah. We need time to market it. We need time to get them advertised, to tell people about them. That's what we, that's our job. So yeah. try not to leave it to the last minute. Um, do register near the auction, register to bid. Um, we've got a, a, a more streamlined um, system in place for the next one with regards to deposits. You now don't need to phone up and do your deposit. It can all be done online, great. That, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, just give us a call, drop us an email. And, and bidding and engagement and, and the way you get involved with this is open to everyone around the world. We've had people tuning in from Melbourne, from Dubai, from Japan, from Portugal, Swaffham. from America. Swaffham, yeah, you know. Swaffham, in case you don't know, so, is, is quite local. Yeah, um, just down but, the road. Uh, but we're based here in Kings Lynn in Norfolk in England uh, at some point, And I know I speak from the heart here with the guys um, from Anglia Car Auctions behind me that they would love to have people back on site. And I'm sure that's what ultimately everyone around the world is working towards. So until that time, this is how you can get involved. And we'd love you to be part of it on May 1st and May 2nd, 2021. Lovely. See you Brilliant. soon. See you soon. Thank you. Right, I'll take the Assetta and the A60. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whip away with those. Yeah, I'll put one in the back of the other and then I'll, uh, I'll drive the E30.